boys and girls. Welcome to a, another Kids Sunday video. I'm Miss Christina. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. So, as you can see, I have a lot of gardening things here. And we were talking a few weeks ago about gardening. Um, and I brought in some plants, but this is a different kind of gardening. This gardening uses seeds. Do you guys ever plant seeds at home? Gardening with seeds is one of my favorite things to do. And it kind of reminds me of our Bible story. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But things that I need for gardening, like with seeds, are of course the seeds. The seeds I chose are these beautiful flowers. So I have my flower seeds. I have my flower pot right here. And I have gloves because when you're working with dirt, your hands get messy, so I have garden gloves. I have my trusty shovel. Um, and then of course, I have my dirt. And I used, uh, I'm gonna use this special potting soil in this bag. So when you're planting seeds, you have to get the soil ready, right? You have to get lots of things ready. You can't just do it, you have to get things ready. So when you're gonna plant a seed, you need dirt, and a pot to put it in, and maybe gloves and a tool. And so there's lots of things that you need to get ready. And the seed itself is actually a little bit interesting um, because it's not really anything special. I'll show you if you guys know probably what seeds look like. But um, I'm gonna hold them up in my hand. You see they're little. And they're this kind of these little dried up little things, aren't they? But these seeds kind of look like they're dead. Do you guys know um, that even though they look like they're dead, they turn into a beautiful, beautiful flower. And these are the flowers that hopefully our seeds will turn into. Well, I love gardening and I love planting flowers because it actually reminds me of part of our Bible story today. We've been talking about Jesus. And um, today's Bible story is called Jesus um, Jesus' resurrection. And resurrection is a very fancy word. Resurrection means coming alive. And sort of like the seed that kind of looks like it's dead, when you put it into dirt and you give it the things that it needs, it comes alive. Um, our Bible story today, Jesus will come alive. Um, and he was dead and he comes to life because he's God's son. So I chose plants um, and planting to kind of give you guys an idea of what it's like to be dead and then to come alive. So before we get into our Bible story though, I wanted to remind you of um, everything that we do in our Sunday School videos comes from the Bible and everything in the Bible is true. And in the first four books of the New Testament, uh, we've been learning about Jesus' life. And so um, the first, first stories that we were learning about a while back were talking about the weeks um, that Jesus started his ministry on earth. And he spent three years traveling around teaching people all about God and his kingdom. And if you remember, he came into Jerusalem and they welcomed him as their king. And instead of being crowned king, they crucified him. And he, was, um, he, was, he died and was buried. And our Bible story today takes place a couple days later. Um, so after, um, after he uh, was died, he was put into a tomb. And so that's where our story picks up today. But before we get to our story, we need to ask our big picture question. Because we're going through a new set of lessons, we have a new big picture question. So I'm gonna get the question mark. As always, question is hiding somewhere. Let me look around. Hmm. Question mark is here. All right. Today's question, our new question is, where is Jesus now? Hmm. Our question says, where is Jesus now? Well, we know from last week that Jesus died on the cross and he was put into a tomb. 
And we're going to learn that Jesus isn't dead anymore. But our big quick picture question says Jesus ascended into heaven where he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Oh my goodness! Is that crazy or what? It's kind of hard to understand, isn't it? Well, as the weeks go on, we're going to learn more about our big picture question because um, it is so important to know that Jesus is ascended. Ascended means that he has come out of death. And so we're going to be learning some big words over the next few weeks. So I hope you guys can have your listening ears for our Bible story because there's lots of things and exciting things that we're going to be learning about Jesus. So it's time for our Bible story. So let's get our listening ears on. Let me find mine. All right. Ready? Boop. All right. My listening ears are on. Our Bible story is next. On the third day after Jesus' death, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb. It was still dark, and she saw that the large stone at the entrance had been moved away. Mary ran to Simon Peter and John. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him, she said. <gasps> oh. Peter and John ran to the tomb. John looked inside and saw the linen clothes lying there. Then Peter went into the tomb and saw the linen clothes too. The cloth that had been around Jesus' head was folded up. John believed that Jesus was alive. Then Peter and John went back home. Mary went back to the tomb and cried. When she looked inside, she saw two angels sitting there. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him, she said. Then Mary turned around. Jesus stood in front of her, but she did not recognize him. Jesus said, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary thought Jesus might be the gardener. She replied, Sir, if you have taken Jesus away, tell me where you've put him, and I will go get him. Jesus said, Mary. Mary realized who he was and said, Teacher, Jesus sent Mary to tell the other disciples that he was going back to the Father. Mary did what Jesus said, and she told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Meanwhile, some of the guards from Jesus' tomb went into the city and told the religious leaders everything that had happened. The leaders got together and made a plan. They gave the soldiers a lot of money and told them to lie about what they saw. Say that Jesus' disciples came in the night and stole his body while you were sleeping, they said. The guards took the money and lied about Jesus' resurrection. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but he didn't stay dead. God was pleased with Jesus' sacrifice and raised Jesus from the dead to reign as king over all creation. Jesus provides salvation from sin and the promise of eternal life. Hey guys, how are you? So what did you think about today's Bible story? It was kind of like a miracle, wasn't it? Well, I came to you from a kind of like a cool spot, don't you think? Do you guys have a cool place like this at home? Well, this is my tent. I came to my tent because it kind of reminded me of the tomb that Jesus was in. Do you remember um, in the tomb? I'm gonna close my tent. I'm gonna close it all the way, see? I can close my tent and it can be very dark. <laughs> and you can't see me. <laughs> so, uh, in our Bible story today, I came to this special place because it reminded me of the tomb that Jesus was in. Because after he was crucified on the cross, um, they laid him in a tomb because he had died. And he was there for several days. So, his uh, birth was miraculous and wonderful. And um, 
This part of her story was also miraculous and wonderful because it would not have mattered if he lived a perfect, sinless, spotless life if he did not uh, resurrect from the dead. And remember, that's a fancy word, resurrect. It means come alive. And he came alive from the dead. So um, his victory would not have been complete if um, God did not raise Jesus from the dead to defeat sin and death. So I came to my cool tent today just to remember our Bible story. Um, so it also just reminds me um, of our story because sometimes when uh, we don't trust in Jesus and when I have my tent closed, it can be like kind of dark in here and it can leave us feeling like we're in a dark place. Um, and when we don't have Jesus in our hearts, we can feel like we're in a dark place. And without our faith in Jesus, uh, we're slaves to our sin. But Jesus um, died on the cross for our sins, so we don't have to be slaves to sin anymore, do we? No. We, um, we don't have to act in sinful ways that go against God because Jesus died to the to um, our sinful ways and so we can live a life that glorifies him and we have victory over those sins and that's a great thing ah, and because God will forgive us of all of our sins from the past and all the sins that we will do in the future because Jesus died for all of our sins and he has enough mercy to forgive us and so, um, I hope you guys understand our Bible truth today. Maybe you can find a really cool spot to think about what the story means. So, we're also going to learn um, a new memory verse. And I hope you have fun. <laughs> Whoops. I hope you have fun with our new friend. It's someone purry. All right, guys, have fun. Hi, boys and girls. Get to learn memory verses with you. Purr, I can't wait. I love learning memory verses from the Bible. So today's a brand new memory verse. It's from John 11 25. It says, Jesus, we do that motion for Jesus, said to her, I am the resurrection, and you put your hands like this, and the life, and you put your hands down. The one who believes in me, give yourself a hug. Even if he dies, you put your arms down. Will live, and you put your arms up in the air. Okay, let's try it again. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection, like this, and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, you put your arms down, will live. Put your arms up. Yeah, like a party. Good job. John 11, 25. Awesome. Let's talk about what that means. Okay guys, so I wanted to talk to you for a minute about what today's Bible verse actually means. So, Jesus spoke these words to Martha right before he raised Lazarus from the dead. That was a Bible story that we learned a little while ago. He said, I am the resurrection. And in today's Bible story, he proved that he was the resurrection by resurrecting from the dead. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. And we can also be resurrected from our sins if we accept Jesus as our savior. And that's the best news of all. So, even if we die, we'll live forever with God in heaven if we put our trust in Jesus. All right, guys, that deserves a dance party. Meow, meow. Time to do a dance party. Meow, meow. Have fun. Meow. Hey, 
guys, it's craft time. So today's craft is kind of just a hands-on thing and it's also like a play thing. So there's a few things that we're going to need for our craft. Um, one of them is if you want to print out the papers that were in the email, one of them is a, a paper of the scene from our Bible story today. So it's the cave uh, or tomb that Jesus was buried in. And there's also a page that has the characters from our story. So that's this one. It has Jesus, John, Mary, and Peter. So uh, what you're gonna do with these papers is you can cut out the individual people. And what I did is I taped them to a craft stick. Um, and so I cut them out and I taped them to a craft stick. And you guys can at home um, take turns reenacting the story and parts of the story. So um, you can use the characters and you can use the scene to say the words from the Bible. Or if you want to read uh, the story from the Bible, you can get the Bible out. And as you're reading, um, use the characters to tell the story. So that's a fun thing that you can do for today's Bible story. And I also thought today we can play with some Play-Doh. So if you have Play-Doh at home, um, this is a time you can get out your Play-Doh. So I thought we could make uh, a tomb with our Play-Doh. So if you have Play-Doh, I'm gonna show you how I did it. So I made a tomb um, and I made the stone and I'll show you up close. This is kind of what my makeshift tomb and stone look like. Um, and inside I have a little bit of a tissue paper that I have, see, a little bit of a tissue. So the things you'll need for this activity are Play-Doh, of course, and um, a tissue. So to make the tomb, I used um, kind of just a chunk of Play-Doh. I rolled it into kind of a ball, if you can imagine. Um, I rolled it into a ball shape. And to make the tomb part, the cave, I kind of used my fingers and I pushed a little hole into it. So once I got it into a hole shape, sort of, kind of like a cave, like that. See, I have my little cave, I plopped it down. And to make the stone, what I did was, I took another piece of Play-Doh when I rolled it into a ball, I squished it, squish. <laughs> and when you squish it flat, it kind of makes a roll or a stone that you can place over top. Um, and then to make the tissue, of course, you just take a little piece of tissue and you fold it up into a square. Because if you remember from our Bible story, when they opened the tomb, they only found the linen that was left over. So I hope you guys have fun. Um, reenacting some of the things from our Bible story today. This was such an important part of our very important story, the most important story of the whole entire Bible. Without this story, the rest of the Bible wouldn't um, be true, like they wouldn't be true. This was part of the most important story. So I hope that you guys had really, really, really good listening ears today. And I hope that you can have fun with these activities. Before we go, we're going to say a prayer. Our hands we fold, our heads we bow, so we can talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, and thank you for raising him from the dead and for um, saving us from our sins. And just thank you for helping us to understand how important this truth is. And thank you for uh, bringing us to this Bible story today. We love you, God. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!